All right, you guys, so I'm gonna go on a little crusade in this video. And I'm gonna try and shine a light on an aspect of drawing that admittedly is a little, you know, elementary in its concept. But I do think it's essential for when you're drawing pretty much anything, and that something is... That's right, folks, so in my opinion, overlap is a criminally underrated aspect of art. It's something that's like very obvious once you point it out, but I think because it's so obvious, it's become something that is often overlooked amongst beginner artists and maybe even some intermediate artists. And you know, over the years of sharing my drawings on the internet, I'd often get asked the question, how do you draw figures in perspective? And well, I use overlap. But so, okay, what is overlap? Now, you probably already know what it is, but in case you're an absolute beginner, overlap is simply when a shape is in front of another shape or behind another shape. So take these two spheres, for example. There's no overlap happening now, but as soon as I take this red sphere and I move it on over in front of the blue one, well, look at that. You just successfully created an overlap. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty much as simple as that. And to demonstrate how this principle can create the illusion of perspective in your drawings, I'm going to be drawing a caterpillar. This is imperative, I assure you. Now here we have a drawing of Mr. Caterpillar. And as you can see in this drawing, there isn't any overlap taking place here. Each point where the lines meet are all consecutively and sequentially drawn one after the other. We don't have any lines here that are sitting on top of each other like this. So in other words, this drawing is in a neutral camera angle. And so if we use a side profile view here, that is to say that the angle we're currently looking at Mr. Caterpillar in is one where in which the camera is sitting directly in front of Mr. Caterpillar. And our cone of vision looks something like this. Now, as you can see here, I've gone ahead and split Mr. Caterpillar's body up into three separate segments, one for the head, the midsection, and the bottom bit. And so now I'm gonna use a little overlap to change the perspective of Mr. Caterpillar. Right, so I take this bottom bit, move it in front of the middle, his midsection that is, and take the red one, which is the head, move it behind the midsection, just like that. Now with this, hopefully you can see that it now looks like we're looking up at Mr. Caterpillar, right? The, like the camera angle is low. Now if I go back and do the opposite, which is, so now I'm gonna move the midsection in front of the bottom bit, that and I'm gonna take the red one which is his head in this example I'm gonna move it in front of the midsection like this hopefully now you can see that we're looking at Mr. Caterpillar from above now so we're looking down on Mr. Caterpillar in this case so why is overlap so effective in creating the illusion of perspective well it's because it's the most effective at establishing the proximity of an object as well as a visual hierarchy that creates the illusion of depth if I have many spheres of the same size and the same color and overlap them all, it is still very clear to us that this sphere is the closest to us and this one is the farthest. It's a technique so effective that it's actually established as one of the five types of perspective in both painting and photography. One being linear perspective, two being diminishing scale, three being forced perspective, four being atmospheric perspective, and five being, of course, our old buddy, old pal, overlapping perspective. So now the golden question, how does this translate to figure drawing? Now allow me to make a valiant attempt at trying to explain to you why overlap is so important when you're practicing figure drawing. Okay, so for this segment of the video, I'm gonna try and do it all in one take. Um, just so that I can record my my thoughts as I'm drawing. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna draw two circles like this, like I have been doing the entire freaking video. And all I'm gonna do, so this is actually gonna be the first thing that I want to get across here. The first thing that I want to demonstrate as far as how you can go about 
uh, using overlap to kind of get the particular angle, you know, the specific angle that you're looking for. So what, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move this circle in front of the other one just a little bit. So as you can see, before I even erase that, you can see how much of this circle, this one here, that I'm actually overlapping. Uh, and you can see that it's not, it's really not very much at all, right? Hardly anything. It's just like the very bottom bit there of that circle. <clears throat> and so you can see, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the circle and in fact I'll kind of just draw another one just to represent the head there and draw like the underwear shape okay erase that bit all right And then uh, I can draw like the legs here. Okay. So now we have our figure, and what I want you to uh, to real or to notice about this figure is that even though there was, there is a tiny bit of overlap, right? This right here, where that circle used to be, despite there being overlap in this drawing, it's still a pretty neutral angle right it's not the camera is not like way underneath this figure and it's not way above the figure but it's also not exactly in front of that figure but so now what i want to do is i'm just going to go all the way back to our two circles here and i'm going to take this one and now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go over that other circle, but I'm gonna do it way more severely here. I'm gonna erase that bit where it overlaps. <clears throat> and now, so now you can see that we, there is very little of that overlapped circle left right there's we can only see a very little amount left after putting the circle in front of it and so now let me zoom out here if i put this little head and i go ahead and like you know a little belly button if i go ahead and use this now as sort of like the base like a template of a figure you can see, let me see, now, now can you erase this bit? And hopefully it's already obvious at this point. But we can actually use that put it like this. His little face. I don't know, maybe he's got... Maybe he's got his hands on his hips. Okay, so anyway. Uh, you can see that... By taking these two circles and moving... Moving it just a tiny bit over in front of it, the less overlap that is taking place, the less extreme the camera angle that you're looking at the subject in. And so again, with this figure, just to put it down really quickly, just so I can have it like side by side. Um, let's see here, we don't need, <laughs> we don't need actual legs for this. Um, but so, and now, by doing the opposite, so let's take, again, like we just did, two circles, put it way over it, way over the previous one, 
And now, by doing that, the angle is It is severely changed here. Right, so there, this arm is ridiculous. So from that, we can take away that the more overlap is taking place, the more extreme the angle that we're looking at the subject in. So the less there is, the less extreme the angle, the more overlap, the more extreme the angle. And the reason, of course, obviously, is because overlap, when there is more overlap, there is, now again, this is very obvious. This is like, like I said before, like the, in the beginning of the video, it's almost like pedestrian information, this, this shit. But so it's like, if this was a torso, right? Torso, at this point, I can see the entire torso. Just, you know, bear with me. <laughs> bear with me for, with, with this example here. But it's, I can see the entire torso. And if this circle right here is the pelvis, right, if we add a, a little, little underwear on it, I can see the entire pelvis. So if I put it right on top of each other like that, the head, the arms, that whole thing, being that I can see the entire form, there really isn't any angle that is being applied to the subject. I can see everything. Nothing is being blocked. Nothing is in front of anything. But as soon as I take the pelvis and move it in front of that torso, there is now much less of the torso that I'm able to see. So if we go to a side profile view here of this, with the same exact example, Let's see, let me move them, wait, wait, no. Take circle, move it. Bam. All right, so in this example, what I just did, I did not, so you can see, I didn't move this circle way, way in front of this circle like I did with that one. I'm only moving it about halfway, halfway into that circle, but it's the same exact thing because if this is a side profile, right, this is the head of this guy, I don't even know, like, what, what kind of pose this is, right, the underwear, it doesn't matter. The camera angle of this drawing, it's as if, I have a camera. This looks so wrong right here. This is this is this is wild. Okay, but so if I have the camera, <laughs> I have it, and I'm moving it like this. This is basically this is basically what's happening. And so let me uh, let me take the camera here. Let me like put it way below. There we go. And our cone of vision is kind of like this, right, right? Yes. So that's our cone of vision. So now if I erase this bit here, look at how much that we're actually able to see inside of our cone of vision from that angle. Again, this, this angle, is this angle if I did it in a side profile view. Look at how much of the body we aren't even looking at. And now, of course, because that is still our point of view, our eyesight is going, 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 hitting this form. And so now, and so now this part of the figure this whole bit is blocked because this form right here 
is blocking all of this. So as you can see up here, if I erased, erase all the freaking words and, and lines and crap, right? This whole red bit in this example would be this whole area. It's this whole area, but we aren't seeing it because this form is in front of it, thus it's blocking our view of it. That is basically the, the idea of overlap. And that's how we can use it to shift uh, the, sort of like the rotation of the subject so as to create depth. And so <clears throat> I've been doing this all in like upshots, but it works the exact same way uh, in the opposite. So if I do this, Now, like I was saying before, there's only there was only a tiny bit of overlap that I did for that circle there, and with that gone, even though there is overlap, it's a pretty much it's still like a, a neutral angle. This guy maybe he's just like bending over, you know, very slightly. But now, if I go back and do the exact same thing I was doing before, okay, and if I take it and I move it way in front of the other one, put his head here. Now you can see, oh wait, let me erase that bit. That if I use that as the base for a figure and start working on top of it, um, hopefully you can see how the amount of overlap that we just put onto that other circle The more overlap we did, the more severely the shift in the angle. Right, so now it looks like we are looking... Oh, this guy's back is just... Busting out. So now it looks like we're looking at him from way above, almost like directly on top of this guy. And that is because of how much overlap we put onto that circle. If I took a little circle like this, instead of one that's like the same size, and I do the same thing, I overlap a ton of it. And this is something that I do all the time, personally. Now I have the making or the makings of a pose that is like uh, very extreme. Uh, but the, the result, the result is a very clearly readable, or at least hopefully clearly readable, um, shift in the angle here, at least in how the body, or at least in how we are perceiving this body. Right, the camera angle is neutral. This is a neutral camera angle, right? It's not, we're not looking up at him, we're not looking down at him, but because there was still overlap taking place, which was like, right, this form, And then this tiny sliver right here, because of the overlap of those two circles, it can clearly communicate still that there is there is a form underneath there, right? It's not just like one circle kind of sitting on top of legs. Even even though, if I did that, it still you know it still communicate communicates pretty clearly. But by, put, by adding that, it's like 
you know, the more information you're giving you the viewer, the clearer the image. And so that is pretty much how I use overlap to create a, a dynamic angle like this or to just use a neutral angle, but I'm overlapping the forms themselves. Now for the arms, for example, even those arms that I drew there that I'm erasing away now, even those were overlapped. So if I drew out the whole arm, right, as if it was full length, I might need to move this guy over just a little bit to fit the whole thing. Right, so if I did that, I, now this is like as if the arms were, if there weren't, wasn't any overlap taking place, right? So, I mean, it's, it's still, you know, like a, a readable, readable pose, albeit maybe a little weird, but you can still, you can still tell what's going on here. Now, what I did here, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce a little overlap. And so that would be as if I took this arm, let me select it kind of better, move it over here so that it is behind his torso, his shoulders. Do the same thing over on this side. Move it way in there. And then erase the bit that is being overlapped. Now we have a pretty similar result as to when I first drew this little figure here. And that is all due to overlap. Now maybe, maybe, now this might look stupid. But let's see if I erase a bit of these legs. Now the reason I'm erasing them first instead of moving it into it is because I'm just kind of estimating uh, how much of them, how much of these legs is actually being overlapped. So it's just kind of, I'm like kind of doing it by the eye here. So I move it in. Take this other one, I move it in. And as you can see now, it's a little more, the, the position of this figure, it was changed slightly, right? If this is like, if this was animation, this is like one frame and this would be like the other frame. Now it looks like he's bent over even more so than before. And that's really, that's the, that is the, the power of the, the majesty of overlap. And it's why I use it all the damn time now, however, right? However, you may be asking yourself or not, or not asking yourself, but you may be saying, Emilio, <clears throat> I don't want to freaking draw circles, right? If you're using like a mannequin. Or whatever you got like a mannequin that you like to do uh, for your figure drawing warm-ups or whatever and if you have this mannequin you got the legs whatever you may be saying to yourself I don't want to draw all of these freaking shapes right all individually and move them up into each other every single time I want to draw a pose. Well, you really don't have to, and that looks, <laughs> I don't even know what is happening in this, in this example. But anyway, or I guess that works. I see it. <laughs> That's dumb. But so look. 
you don't want to draw all the shapes you really don't have to and now I'm now I'm gonna move on to the second thing that I wanted to demonstrate here <clears throat> so instead of looking at the form so if I have two circles again I'm gonna use the circles because that's the most easily explainable I got the circle so instead of looking at these two circles as forms right instead of paying attention to the form we're going to pay attention to the line work of what we actually drew right so we're going to uh, shift our attention over from 3d to a 2d sort of perspective so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this circle and again i'm going to put it over just very slightly in front of the over in the other circle and now I want you to pay attention uh, to let me make this line red and this line red by the way sorry if you can hear like noise in the background there's like a uh, my neighbor is, is mowing their lawn and I don't I have no idea if it's coming through uh, but so anyway <clears throat> I highlighted these these lines in red because I want you to pay attention to look at how much space is in between these two lines here these two red lines that I have or that I highlighted there is a fair bit amount of space in between these two lines and so because now from what we just uh, from what we just uh, demonstrated earlier because there's so little overlap in this drawing we know that the the less overlap is taking place the less extreme the camera angle right we know we know that because we just we just sort of confirmed it before so the mannequin you get the deal <clears throat> right neutral neutral camera angle very little overlap and now we the thing that I want you to, to really drill into your head lot of space in between these two lines now I'm going to take this guy move them over and now I'm gonna do the the other example here have two circles move it way in front erase that bit so now I'm going to highlight the, the lines here in red okay this one and that one All right, so now you can see in this example where there is a ton of overlap taking place, you can see that these two lines, look at the space in between these two lines now. There is very little space in between these two lines. They are much closer to each other now than they were in this example right look at how many dots I placed in between those lines and now look at how many dots I was able to place in between those two and so again from what we demonstrated before we already know that the more overlap is taking place the greater uh, the angle that we're looking at the subject in and so the reason why looking at the line work is so important now with these two examples is now we can we can mesh these two pieces of information together. So now we can, the takeaway here is that <clears throat> the more space in between your line work of whatever subject that you're drawing, in this case, the subject is, is two circles. The more space there is in between your line work, the less extreme, the camera angle, the less extreme, uh, the foreshortening 
that is taking place as well as the overlap and i guess foreshortening and overlap i mean they're not the same thing technically but it's like you know a little bit interchangeable or not <laughs> i don't really i don't fucking know but so now moving over to this one the takeaway in this example is the more or not well yes the closer the line work is uh, in your two subjects, the more extreme the angle is going to be, right? The closer your line work, the more extreme the angle. <clears throat> so now I'm going to attempt to to demonstrate this using just lines. So I'm not going to draw two circles and move them into each other now. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw two lines to demonstrate uh, overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw one line and another line. Now what I want to let me just do this real quick. So I'm just going to draw this box mannequin again. Right. Belly button. His face. Okay, so this box mannequin. What? So these two lines, what I'm actually seeing in my mind, I'm not looking at just two lines, even though that's literally all, all, all I'm looking at. That's not what I see in my head. What I see in my head is this line right here that I'm gonna now highlight in blue, just to better demonstrate this, is the blue line that I'm looking at there is actually this line right here, right? So if this bit, damn, I need to just do another layer. <clears throat> so if this bit is the upper body, right, or basically the rib cage slash. Uh, root cage. This is the midsection. Um, and then this triangle to me always just represents the pelvis. So in these two lines, the blue line is either the top of the pelvis or the bottom of the midsection. This red line here in that example is this line right here right so this is this is what i'm keeping keeping in mind when i'm drawing these two lines so that red line right that one there is either the bottom of the rib cage or the top of the midsection. And so now with those two inf uh, pieces of information there, I can kind of go ahead and, oops, let me go to this other. If that's the belly button, right? Because in, the, in this example, this blue line, if it's, if it's the top of the pelvis, belly button is right there. Then I can put the belly button there, and now it's now I have more information uh, for me to draw from. So if I put the head, let me actually zoom out a little. <clears throat> put the head there. This blue line is the pelvis. We can do that. Why is it not letting me? Okay, there we go. Right, the arm, socket, or whatever. Now, just by drawing those two lines and keeping this information in mind, I can more or less draw the pose in the 
camera angle that I intended, which the camera angle that I intended was to have a pretty extreme angle. And the reason why it worked is because those two lines, the red and the blue one, you can see the space between them, there isn't that much space. These two lines are pretty close to each other, so there is more overlap. Therefore, the, there is a more extreme angle. And so if I did the opposite, put this line over here, and this line right here, Right, make give their put like a ton of space in between these lines. We can say there isn't a ton of overlap here, so this is the pelvis. This guy's got a very square groin. The upper body. The midsection, the belly button. And the legs, you can see now, this very, this very quickly, crudely drawn example. <laughs> look at his groin! This looks like he's Tarzan. Anyway, look. Look! This, <laughs> this is what I want to show you. You can see that because there was, or between these two lines, there is a lot of space in between those two lines now in this example this red line of course obviously is instead of the bottom of the rib cage this it is now the the top of the rib cage right this line here i didn't actually say that in the in the beginning or it could have worked well it doesn't matter there's a lot of space in between those two lines and so now the camera angle the less the more space means that there is less overlap and again the less overlap the less extreme the camera angle now if i went all the way back here and <clears throat> and i did this if this line this red line if that red line is the bottom of the rib cage well that's going to look absolutely let me move them all together that's going to look absolutely ridiculous because if that's the bottom of the rib cage that would suggest that this is his whole entire rib cage and the, and then it would be like his midsection is this whole area. And I don't even need to continue here for you to realize that that doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't. That looks ridiculous. That's like, that's like stretching it a little too far. But so now what I want to demonstrate just really quick, cause I'm already, I'm timing myself. I'm already like 40 minutes. I probably have to edit it down a little bit or use time lapse something. But anyway, I'm going to use the, I'm going to go back to the, the two circle example here. My best friend, two circles, two circles. So we all look, we already, we know about the overlap, all of the, the more the overlap, the less, whatever. So now that we know that information, what I've been doing this whole time is I'm putting it like directly in front of or behind the like kind of straight up and down north south. Now what happens if instead of doing that I move it over here to the right and then do it. Now if I put the head there the groin, right? If that's the, if this is the underwear, erase this bit. And I continue on. Oh. 
with this example here. Now, hopefully you can see that the, the, the angle is the one that I wanted, but the position is also <laughs> very highly altered. Now you can see this guy, this is a very strange, Wait, no, here we go. His hand is right here. That's his waist. Right, the position of the actual body, the, the pose, is also uh, altered just by shifting the placement of the of those two circles in the beginning. Now this is very highly uh, exaggerated, as far as like how the body is uh, being stretched in this example. Oh my goodness! Let me take this shit. There, now, <laughs> this is hilarious. Now our figure looks like they're kind of, we're looking up at the figure, which is what I wanted, but now I also changed the pose itself just by moving the circle well, just slightly to the right instead of directly like north, south, that kind of thing. Now. If I, let me see here, let me go back. Let me go back to the two circles. Now, I'm gonna keep the same position of the two circles, but instead I'm gonna move the head over here. And now, just by moving the head, You can see that, hopefully you can see, that I now have a completely different pose than the one before, even though the positioning of the circles was exactly the same. Right now in this pose, it kind of looks like we're still looking up at this figure, but the, uh, but so anyway, so now you can see that the even though the position of the circles is, the circles is the same, so the the amount of overlap is the same, but in this pose, just by shifting the position of his head, now it makes it look like the actual pose. His torso is in a more neutral position, even though the the amount of overlap was exactly the same and so just by switch like you know like mixing and matching the position of of your forms uh, hopefully in this example you can see that it could either severely or just a little bit uh, change you know it can like alter the pose entirely is the is the point that i'm trying to get out here so now that's going to be that's going to be the end of this uh middle part of the video, this live demonstration. Uh, and I'm gonna kick it back over to uh, Cartoon Me. And so now with all that being said, that's gonna do it for today's video. And so real quick, I just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel thus far uh, in its infancy stage. I really didn't expect such a big response on my last video, but I am grateful and I do feel so honored to just feel so welcomed on this uh, platform. Uh, but again, thanks everyone for your support. And of course, if you wanted to support me even further, uh, please consider doing so over on my Patreon page. I share a bunch of stuff over there, like exclusive weekly action pose references, videos just like this one. Uh, and in fact, I'll be sharing a bonus video to this one um, over on Patreon, exclusively for Patreon. That'll just be a few more examples of uh, overlap kind of just doing a few more figure drawings like this one using overlap. 
And of course, lest I forget, my ever self-indulgent original character art. And so to all my current patrons, thank you so much for your support over there. It means the world to me. But enough of all that shit. That's going to do it for today's video, you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'm going to get out of here. Remember to use that overlap. Draw those caterpillars. And I'll see you next time.